We're now ready to boot our Raspberry Pi for the very first time. For these workshops, I'm using this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, and I have plugged into it an HDMI lead for video, a wireless keyboard and mouse in the USB ports, power here, and on the back side is the SD card slot for the SD card that we flashed in the last video. Just after plugging in the power, this is what we're presented with. This is our, our boot menu, and we're going to select to install Raspbian. So let's install that. Go back into that. And welcome to Pixel Powered by Raspbian. And here we are in our very first boot up. This, this should look pretty familiar to people used to using like a Windows or Mac. We've got our, uh, I guess our applications bar at the top, a nice desktop, uh, a waste basket. And if your, if your desktop looks a little, a little different to mine, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a different video. So let's just, let's just get this thing set up, I guess. The first thing we should do is get rid of these weird black bars that are around the corners, the edges of the screen. This, these are called the overscan lines. So we can go to the, the Pi button, which is like our start menu. And let's go to preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration. Uh, here we go, underscan. So we want to disable underscan. That will require a reboot, so I'm just going to hit no for now. But the next time we reboot the Pi, the, the desktop should fill the entire screen. Uh, other things we should do are set up the keyboard properly. If, um, if you try to type in special characters like the hash or the, the dollar sign, you might find you get symbols that you didn't intend to type, like the British pound symbol. That's because the Raspberry Pi is British, and so it's set up for a British keyboard. So we're just going to go into keyboard and mouse settings and let's go to keyboard layout and because i'm using a us style keyboard i need to go to the united states and i'm just going to put in english us so now if i put in say the hash symbol that is what comes up if we were still in united kingdom then you get the pound symbol when you want to enter the hash that can be quite annoying to have, it's clearly quite annoying to have a, an improperly set up keyboard when you need to do some programming. Uh, that's, that's enough for that. Okay, and finally, because I am using a Raspberry Pi Model 3B, I do have the option to connect to a wireless network, and here they are. So if I wanted to connect to this guest network, I can click there and type in the, the key, and that would connect me to Wi-Fi. So that completes the basic setup of the Pi, but let's actually have a look at what we can do with it. Let's start with the applications bar. We have this, this web browser icon here. So of course, if we click that, we get a pretty familiar looking web browser. Now I'm not connected to Wi-Fi at the moment, but of course we could be, and we could start browsing the internet. Let's close that. We have a familiar looking file system. So We've started off in this Pi directory, which is our home directory for the current user, which is called Pi. And we also have, so you can see we've got slash home slash Pi. That slash is the, is the root directory, the, the topmost level directory. And then the file system is organized underneath that. And our home directory is Pi. We could, we could have a look at through the rest of the file system, but it's not particularly interesting. Uh, we have a terminal. This is, we're going to be using a lot of this in future videos. This is a very powerful tool with how we're going to interact with the Raspberry Pi. And we also have the Mathematica and Wolfram uh, suites, which are useful for doing math and, and writing math scripts. Under programming, we have plenty of programming options. We're, I think we're going to focus mostly on Python down the track. In Office, we have a few um, Office tools. We've got Minecraft, and of course, just a few um, accessories and applications. So that completes this section. At this point, your Raspberry Pi could be used as a very small, very low power desktop computer, and you can continue to use it in that way. In the next video, we're gonna take a, a closer look at that terminal.